live. Still don't see it on Facebook. Says we're live, but I don't see it on Facebook. Let me see again. You just showed up yours live on Facebook coming up. Let me see. Okay, I see it. It's there now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it works, man. Let me see. All right. Um, so let's just wait a few seconds there. Um and, and, and um Yes, it works. So we are live here on Facebook. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live once again. Um, this is the first time attempting a dual stream. So um, I have my guest here today and um, we're we are going to be looking at um, our live. Our guest here is um, would be celebrating Easter this year, um, but certain, um, what should I say? He would call it truth. Certain truths have been revealed to him, so he has um, come out of Christianity, and so with. Just um, like to hear his story, um, to hear um, what his experience was and why he actually decided to make this um, actual change. All right. So, uh, without further ado, ado, just like to ask him to introduce himself. Okay. So go ahead, Wayne. Introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Wayne, which most of you all know. <laughs> I'm having a delay on my side. Okay, let's, let's go ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead, Wayne. Okay, yeah, all right. Yes, Um. <laughs> well, basically, you know, from way back... Way, way, way back in the days, you know, trying to live a life. No, first, no, first introduce yourself. Who are you and whatever? Yeah, I did say Wayne. Oh, okay, that's that's it, Wayne. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just Wayne should be okay. <laughs> okay. So go ahead. Okay. Okay, I continue. Well, like I said, um, you know, being in the church system for many, many years, um, I have a great desire to serve and, you know, realize that there are always something that's missing. And I just couldn't find or put my finger on that which it was. So, of course, still go to church every day, I mean, every Sunday many years, but I know, like I said, definitely something was missing. I have it logically done pack. I could reason very logical, but that was just um, on the physical part of it. But spiritually, I really was lacking. And I start to dig deeper for truth. You know, digging deeper for truth. Still before going to you, church. Before you reach, um, reach that, how long were you in Christianity? <clears throat> well, to be a matter of fact, I have precise <laughs> dates. Um, it was February 11, 1997. February 11, 1997. Yeah. Okay, that's so much. That's a while. Yeah. So that's a while. Um, so another question I have is, um, what made you feel that something was wrong? Something was missing? 
Well, it would be very difficult to explain because it's a personal experience wherein I felt that something is missing. When it comes to the Most High, I always said there is there got to be more about the Most High than this which I'm experiencing all these years. I said there got to be more because what I would normally see is church, 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 over and over and over, then what? So I know that something was missing somewhere and I just could not point my finger on exactly what that was. All right, so the question is now, um, what made you figure out what it was? Or well, have you figured out what it was? Okay, the first thing happened, we start to, well, before all of these, you know, my family and I would get together on Thursday nights and have prayer meetings here um, at our house. So right. since last year, February, we start to do more in the form of a home group meeting where my family and a few friends would get together and search for truth. We get down in the world and we search for truth and we are seeing more each time we get together. We search, search and find more. So we decided that we are going to keep on with the home group meeting. Moreover, when I get to understand that in the day of Pentecost, so many were saved and it took place within homes. Personally, I thought you have to go to church to be saved. And as a result, recently, if I miss church, I feel so guilty. <laughs> you know? Hmm. But upon digging for the truth, and when I came upon one section that says, we must worship the Most High in spirit and in truth. So I said, this can be done anywhere. You know, so still, go, still going to church and still having our own meeting. The first okay. thing happened. Okay, go ahead. The first thing happened. I was in my room one evening, laying on my bed, and I heard a sound right at my door, very clear, saying, Israel don't understand. And I said, hmm, what does that mean? So I was there trying to hear more, and I just didn't hear anything else. That's all I hear. Israel don't understand. And I was going on wondering what this is. I asked a few people, what does this mean? And um, last year, sometimes, I think it was in December, not last year, but 2018 in December, I was talking to Brian and I told um, the dream to Brian. And um, of course, he gave me a scripture. And when I went there, I think it was Isaiah 1, verse 2 to 3. Yes. And I went, I went to that verse and I see clearly that it was speaking to me. And some time ago, I went, I think it was Romans 19, verse 10, or Romans 10, verse 19, and I see something similar relating to what I heard. So I start digging deeper and deeper and deeper. One day, okay. go ahead. Okay, go ahead. So with all this time, you know, still going to church and still having our own meeting. And for the ones who know me, I always post on Facebook and you'll almost always see me posting stuff that is original. I try not to post things that I'm not sure about. If I share something, I first watch it and assess it before I circulate it. But this day in question... I was in the word studying. 
Mm-hmm. And I came across Galatians 4, verse 8 to 9. And it moved something within me. So I put it on Facebook. And a few days after, that same verse keep on coming back to me. So I was wondering, why is it coming back to me, you know? And it just dawned on me so much. Keep coming back to me. So I went back on Facebook and found that same post and I do a screenshot. And I looked deeper in the verse. So I said, this sounds like it is for me and not really for Facebook. So basically it was saying, um, like days past, you did not know me. You serve others that were not of me. But now that you have, uh, you have known me, or rather have known by me, why do you turn again to that bigarly places to be again entangled in bandage? Well, those are not the exact words. But you could find it, Galatians 4, verse 8 to 9. And I said, okay, this is what it is saying to me, you know, because now we are having home-based meeting and I'm learning more, still going to church. And at that point, I get that verse. So basically, it is saying to me, or it is asking me, why are you going back to that place? So I said to myself, wonder what this, um, this is saying to me. Should I leave church or what? I'm not sure. And still keep on getting more revelations. You know? One more instance. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. So um, you got that Galatians for 8 to 9. All right? Mm-hmm. So what... Um, actually made you decide, actually, no, today I'm going to leave or I'm not going to go tomorrow. Well, it still didn't happen just then because I love church so much. It's like I'm looking for something (laughs) very, very concrete before I make that move. You know, I was very, like I said, caught up very you know want to know more about the most die so yes so that was two the third thing happened i had a dream this time and i went to a place it was a very big place like a football field you know and i see um a bunch of people standing looking up so i look up also when i look up I saw dark, thick clouds in the sky. And from those clouds, I saw small flames of fire forming along those clouds. And in seconds, those small flames become so huge, a pile of fire coming down on earth in a speed. So every, everyone started to run. So I said to myself, there is no way, no one can outrun this fire. So I was going to run too, and I turn around, and I hold my children in the form of a covering, and I hold them like this, and then I walk up. And again, upon looking in the word, I realized, really, and in fact, the most that is talking to me. That is that is Joel 2 verses 1 to 3. That was your dream. Yes. I'm, I'm going to share it in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so still going to church and, you know, um, one day I get a call from someone and the exact words were, that place where you're taking your children to, be careful. And within that same week, I was contemplating about leaving church. 
and I get this call in the same week. So when I think about it, the only place I took my children is church. So I think that was enough, but I still did not make a move. <laughs> what a what a strong word. And you know what when, when I strong word. <laughs> last year, July, August. Yeah, last year, August. I planned to go um, to the church where I was a member to let it be known that I will no longer be a member here. I still did not go right away. And I saw where the enemy start to stir things up. And I felt it so heavy. My heart is like pounding so hard. I had to run very fast to go set this meeting up with the pastor to say to him that I'm leaving. It wasn't easy to explain to him why. Because they wouldn't understand. But I saw enough I saw too much to still not heal to the calling. And the truth is, since I leave, I saw some things is like there are just so much to learn. I learned so much and there are still so much to learn. So, um... You have learned so much and there's so much to learn. Um, what is the difference in terms of knowledge and understanding? What, what, what do you think about the knowledge and understanding that you get in Christianity compared to what you are getting now? Well, the truth is, it, it will be no comparison. It would be as if in Christianity, I get nothing. I get nothing, you know, and that was very much mind blowing. You know, what I get to realize for myself, there is no way, there is no way at all I can be saved by the church or I can be saved by going to church. It takes a lot more than just going to church. We definitely have to we get in the word for ourselves and to see and to hear and apply that which the most high wanted for us. Yeah. All right. So just tell me some of the main things that you have learned since coming out. Okay. One of the, one of the main things, the Sabbath. You see, after I finish going to church and start to learn, I get back to Genesis. I mean, your yeah, Genesis. And I start all over again. I have to basically take off everything I think I know. And if you notice, I'm not saying everything I know. Everything I think I know, I take it all off. So I want to relearn. I need to be rewired. So I pray and ask the most I to teach me his truth. So I get in the word and coming up, I see the Sabbath that it is um, very important. You know, so I said to myself, hmm, I've never thought about Sabbath. You know, I know about seven day church and Sunday church and that's it. But it is so deep when I see for myself and read and understand Right away, I adjust to start keeping and obeying the Sabbath day. Um, that, wa because, that, was, that yeah. was very big because sometimes the work I do, it is really on Saturdays. And I gave it up. I gave it up to obey the, the, the Sabbath. All right. Um, you are where I was because when I when I 
was in Christianity, I got to realize that um, I was actually serving religion, serving what man gave me. And um, you reach, reach to the point where you realize that it is not about what man says, but it is about what the Most High says. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that it was the same way that I got to the Sabbath as well. And the Sabbath was also the awakening point for me. So um, the next question now is um, what about what you have learned about Israel, about your heritage? Well, about that, it is so funny because it is always there in the Bible. And for some reason, I mean, we just miss it. Because what I get to realize that uh, the Mosai is about a nation of Israel. Right back from beginning to the end. I think I can recall something. Yeah. Time, times ago, <laughs> this is funny. Times ago, um, trying to read and to understand, I do recall coming across some verses about Israel. But I hurry up and skip over it because it sounds so dangerous. <laughs> and it's like, I would not want to be a part of that. <laughs> so I hurry up and pass those books and go on to what sounds nicer. You know? And I just never revisit those, those books in the Bible. Never. And, 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 I, 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 and I, I kind of believe that this is a sentiment with most people. Um, there is so much accountability and responsibility with being um, an Israelite. Um, people prefer to accept themselves as being Gentiles because it is so easy. You don't have to do anything at all. Right. You are not accountable to anything, to follow anything, to be obedient to anything. So that is why people will more gravitate. And when you tell people who they are, they reject it. Because it, it doesn't sound nice at times. But when they get to understand the promises and what is there awaiting, and when they get the understanding that the children of Israel will be ruling this world and every other nation will be serving them, then it becomes even more attractive. You know, just want int to um, interject with that. So continue. You know what? Before I continue, let me put this part in. Um... I never said this to you before. I mean, I talked to you a few times, or a lot. Um, yeah. I'll never share this with you. All those times, you know, going to church, so serious, want to serve, want to do the right thing. And sometimes I would see you on Facebook, and you're doing stuff, yeah. but, you, but you always say, Yahweh. Yeah. So, so I call somebody who I'm pretty close to, you know, and I ask them why they say Yahweh. <laughs> because the truth is, like I said, I was just in one corner. I know almost nothing else. You know? So they said, no, yeah. man, it is, it is just um, Alex's name. Um, Alex's name, I forgot, you know? So I mm -hmm. said, okay, okay, because I just didn't understand. Anyways, so upon digging deeper and deeper, what I realize um, I'm doing is to discipline myself so much. Each time I read and I understand, I make adjustment where adjustment is needed. All right? I understand that in order for us to receive that gift from the Most High, we cannot in no way, shape, or form be like this world. It took me a little time to really fully understand about this world. Because I'm saying, I mean, where else am I going to be? Then I understand that there's a spiritual side of this world. The things that is being taking place in this world, the things that they are doing in this world, I cannot be doing the same things. So although I'm living in this world, I don't have to be subjected to the things of this world. And I find myself graduating from the things of the world. Mark my word. I'm not mm. going to say to you, I'm perfect and I'm there because it is a daily transition. What I find out, and I find it to be working very well, when you understand 
what is life? What are the fruits of the Spirit? I focus yeah. on those. So when I put my focus on those, I don't really find much time for the world. Then I realize I'm going forward. Certain things doesn't entice me anymore. Yep. Even the TV, for example, doesn't entice me anymore. To go to certain places doesn't entice me anymore. Yep. Because you're going to start to see the world for what it is. Exactly. One big evil place. As it says in Job 9.24, the world is given into the hand of the wicked. So the more you come into truth, the more the wickedness of this world will reveal itself. So that's what happens when you come into truth. Those who are not in truth, those who are deceived, will be those who want the world to remain as it is and are, um, are happy and content with the world being as it is. Yeah? Uh -huh. So that is what happens um, during our transition. All right? So, um, the other question now, um, how do you feel, how do you feel um, now compared to then? The, um, do, you, do you miss church or do you feel that you have made the right decision? It's not just a feeling. I know mm -hmm. I made the right decision. If, yeah. there, is, if there is anything at all, I want to leave. There's one thing I cannot leave. There's one thing I cannot forget. Yeah. What I, what I heard in my room. Israel don't understand. That's um, Isaiah 1, 2 to 3. Let me post it in the, in the chat as well. Isaiah 1, 2 to 3. Israel does not understand. And this is a declaration in the book of Isaiah. That when Israel rebels against him, then Israel will be made to not know themselves. And that is what has happened to us as a people, as a nation. We have been made to not know ourselves because our fathers rebelled against the Most High, Yahuwah, Sabaoth. Okay, let me post it in the chat. Um, this is what um, Brother Wayne has gotten several, several messages to come out of her. My people, all right, Yahuwah had spoken, Isaiah 1, 2, the 3. All right, go ahead, Wayne. And if you don't mind, you could also post um, Galatians 4, verse 8 to 9. That was uh, also... Uh, I already did this. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Christian, what advice would you give now to those who are still in Christianity? My advice um, would be first, get any word for yourself. You know, get any word for yourself. Tell yourself that you are hearing so much different things and you want to know what is truth. The first thing I would do, I would, take off, I would take off everything that I learned anywhere. And I would approach the word empty and like a dunce and humble. And I'm sure that you will see and find different from what you think you know. I'm not going to tell anyone to do this or to do that. I'm going to advise you to get in the word of truth. You cannot go with what you know or what you think you know because you will come back the same way how you get in there. You must empty yourself from everything that you are taught. I don't care from how long. Empty it off. Get it, get it off. Get empty. Get humble. Get dunce. And ask the most I to teach you his truth, and I guarantee you, you will be shocked of what the truth would be. Uh, all right. I can empathize with that. Um, by the way, this is Wayne Doheny, our guest here. 
um, who is giving us his account of coming out of Christianity. I can empathize with what you just said because that was the same thing that happened to me while I was in a Pentecostal church way back then. Because back then, you know, you have this Pentecostal pride um, among Christians, proud that you're Pentecostal and all of that. So when the Sabbath came to me, I kind of went into seclusion just decided to stop going to church and decided I prayed and I said to the Most High, I'm no Pentecostal, I'm no Iton, anything, I'm nothing. Teach me and show me the way of truth. And within a space of about two to three weeks, I got to understand. Um, I came out, I said, I have to keep the Sabbath, I have to keep the sacred names of the Father and the Son, I have to keep the feast have to obey the most high. Um, those are what um, came out of my seclusion. I guess if I was in a longer seclusion, then maybe I wouldn't have spent that time in the Yahweh church because uh, maybe then church would have been revealed to me as being bad. But just to agree with what you said, you have to reach a point where you empty out yourself. And Christians have a, have a chance to do that at this moment because right now the Most High has set the world that they are out of that box, out of that church, and they are by themselves in seclusion. A lot of us in curfew, in quarantine, lockdown. We have the internet. We have no excuse. We have all the tools that we need. All right? Lockdown. All the knowledge there, all we need is the desire to get to know and understand him. And so what I can say to Christians, you have the chance now to seek the truth. You have been sold, we have been sold the Babylonian mystery religion of Christianity. It is a false neo-pagan religion of Babylon, right? This is a religion that was spoken about in Revelation 18.4 when it says, come out of her, my people. And my people is referring to the children of Israel. Come out of her, ye children of Israel. Leave Babylon's thing to Babylon. Because in Jeremiah 51, 5 and 6, it says, Israel has not been forsaken. All right? Flee out of the midst of Babylon. So this is a chance that you get. This is a time that we have now as Israelites, as people, to get exposed to the truth. Yes? So... I agree with you there on that. But also another thing that I would um, say to you, Brother Wayne, that um, we have to, we have to um, also tell them that the, more, the Bible is about a nation of people and not about a religion. Yes? Indeed. Indeed. And they have to understand who they are and what the Bible says about them. All right? Which nation yeah. do you come to? Because the story is different for every nation. All right? Right. So those who are Israelites have to know who they are. That's another thing that I would uh, tell them. Uh, and, and next thing... Um... And next thing I realize, yeah. when you approach the Bible, yeah. you have to know what you're looking for also. Because if you don't know, if you're going to approach it um, as a week, you might not find what you're looking for. You must know who you are. So yep. if, you know, if you know who you are, then you will see and know your material. You will see and know what is yours. Yes. See, uh, see and know what applies to you. Yes. Because not everything in the Bible applies to me. So yep. we, we, we must approach with that mindset. Yep. I have never seen myself ever before in the Word for hours. After I start to dig for truth, I'm in the Word for hours. Yep. You know, I eat the Word. Yep. Yesterday, yesterday we were on in our in our group fellowship, and we were on for eight hours nonstop, from wow. minutes to ten to almost six o'clock. 
we were on and we had to check ourselves. We had to say, wait, it's almost the end of Sabbath. And mm -hmm. the word gets so sweet, you know? Continue. See, that's what happened when um, you approach the word of truth and you're actually finding. The more yeah. you find, the more you want to learn. And yep. because it, it is so much, there's no ending. Yep. You know, we cannot be spiritual lazy. Because if we are spiritual lazy, we will not be filled with the spiritual food. It is not, it is not a free ride. What I realize, it is not a free ride. So I have bad news for everyone who think it is an easy ride and a free ride. It is now. Nah. Now is not the time for the festivities, the fun time, the party time, the everyday blessing. That is not true. You're always blessed. No, no, no. You know, in, in um, Matthew, Jesus said, he came with the sword, not peace. So the yep. peace that, the peace that he's talking about is the peace that we will receive if we are able to overcome this, this war time. Because right now we are at war. Yep. If you really decide in your mind, in your soul, to serve the most high, as long as you are serious, you just pick up your, four, your first sword to start the war. Because it is war time. And when I say war, I mean a non-stop war and to the end. So you have to be ready. And next yep. thing, and next thing um, I just want to say also, even as an Israelite, you know, just being an Israelite can save you. The very same way how the church can save you. It's not all Israel that are of Israel. You know, what a remnant is, exactly a remnant shall be saved. Go ahead. So we must, we must, in order for that gift of eternity, we must go through and pass all these tests that will come up on us. No exception. We are not exempt because of who we are. So just and we, and we mind, see that we see that evidence now with this this smart virus now. And in, in the United States, it has um it is now primarily focused on our people. Yep. And that is because it has been promised that our people must flee out of Babylon. They we were given notice by what is going on in this world. And um, most of our people have not taken heed to turn to the most high. Most of our people are still out there waiting for things to go back as it were. Not changing their lives, not repenting. So um, our people have also to be afflicted because it is promised on our people that if we don't come out of her, then we will um, partake of her iniquity. So it's not enough to just be an Israelite. We have to turn to the Most High, turn to him in sincerity and in repentance. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Wayne, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just saying, um, you know, we definitely have to understand that, you know. It is not a free for all. We, we must obey. You know, we can disobey and still get a prize. You know, even as living here today, if we disobey, there are, um, you know, punishment for us. Okay, but um, by the way, um, if there are any questions, please ask them and then we will go through. Any questions you have for either Wayne or I, you may ask them. All right? And another question I'd like to ask you, that, that was the message for Christians. What message would you give for those who are not in faith? Those who are out there still who have not made any commitment. You mean like um, what, non-Christians or, or Christians? Yeah, yeah, unbelievers. 
Well, the truth is, what I would say to unbelievers, for the ones who never put foot in church, time pass, you would feel like you're condemned. But you know what? I think you guys would be in a better seat than many of us. Because you have nothing to break down. You are ready to start learning the truth. Because no one was there to mess your mind up. No Pentecost, no Seventh Day, no Baptist. You are ready. Yes. You are ready. And the word says, He come for the lost. Yes. You know, you come for the laws. So you are, you are ripe and ready just to get in the word. I mean, the truth is, his word will not um, fall and, you know, and, and on his stony ground. His word will drop everywhere. Yep. And you will hear the truth. In Revelation, um, it says, if I knock on your door and you open it, and uh, let me in. Where you sup, I will sup. So don't close the door any longer. You know, you're in a very good spot right now. Just to open your better, mouth and receive. They are in a better spot than the Christians because they have not been polluted. And um, they don't have any stronghold in their minds. Exactly. Yeah? They can, they can openly receive truth and, 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 and understanding because their minds have not been bound by the lies of the Gentiles, by the lies of Christianity. Yes? Oh. So they are in a better place. And, um, of course, our belief is not about a religion. It's about a people, a nation go. of people who live in righteousness with the Most High and live in righteousness with each other. So um, it is not any anity or ism. It's just the way of life of a people in righteousness. So um, those who are not in any faith are ripe and ready. Yep. And, um, and so we have, um, we have our group. We have a um, group called Israel Awaken. And um, Wayne and I are members of that group. And we have a WhatsApp group as well. So those who are interested, those who are um, interested in learning truth, um, you can um, join our group as we seek to dig into the word of truth. In that group, we help one another. We teach one another. We um, learn from each other. And um, we fellowship together in that group, all right? Not a religion, not a Chris, not a group with a pastor with his tithes and offerings and um, sow a seed here and pay your tithes and offering and it will be multiplied unto you and bring your tithes in the storehouses. No, we are not about that. We are about truth. First and foremost, truth. We are all in pursuit of the truth of the Father. Yep. Yes, so Wayne. Anything else you'd like to say in closing? Well, um, it's basically just to give us a clear, clearer idea and view how much really and in fact we were so lost. Because yeah. when I'm looking for truth and we turn to the churches. We must ask our, our question. We have Baptists, Seventh Day, Pentecost, Anglican, and I can go on and on and on. And each of those churches, they have their, um, their groups. They have their own beliefs. And if everything is not coming to one truth, something is definitely wrong. Yeah. Something has to be wrong. I would understand if there are a hundred different churches and because of space, you know, but they are saying the same thing, the same gospel, that would be fine. But if they're not saying the same thing that is truth, I mean, it can be very devastating. 
Over 40,000 yeah. denomina Christian denominations. Something yep. and something has to be wrong. And the thing about it is everyone wants to be the one who is right. The one who is bringing the truth. So yep. uh, personally, we really have to look in ourselves to see what we want. We don't want to approach any of those and still be wondering, is this the right place? What we, do, what we want is not the place. We want the truth. Yep. That is what we want, truth. And the truth sh shall set us free. Yep. 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 So, um, this, the, the whole truth about it, and I keep telling people, is that Christianity is false religion. All right? It is the religion of our oppressors, the religion of the Edomites, the religion of the nations, of the Gentiles, who have used this religion for world domination and to dominate our minds and to control us. All right? That is why that religion is sanctioned by the state. That is why in America, the churches are getting loans to stay afloat. The original assemblies were persecuted by the state. They were the enemies of the state. Now the state and the church are in bed together. Something must be wrong. And the word is not friendly to the state. The word of truth is not friendly to the state. For example, those of us who believe in what we believe are going to be the enemies of the state. Because when the state comes and says, you have to do this and do that, we are going to say no. We can't do that because we're going to disobey the most high. All right? The churches that are in bed with the state, the church state just marries them and just leads them to lead their followers into um, all sorts of evil. And so that is why the church is just willing and just, just, just anxious to get back to things as it were because the church just focuses on materialism and money, funds. Okay? So... Something is wrong, and we have been given a recess. We, the Most High, has put a full end to the church. Churches cannot function. If a church can even be open, most places, not, not more than 10 people, if they are open at all. Most places, they are closed shut. Yes, a church cannot function on 10 people because a church depends on tithes and offerings. So what is that telling us? The Father has closed these places. He has closed them down in order to give us a break, to listen to interviews like this, to listen to words like this about the church and to give us another perspective, to look and to really search and find truth, all right? Because that is what we have done. Brother Wayne and I, we have done the same thing. We have searched for truth, all right? And we are continuing to search for truth. That is what get, got us away from Christianity. And if you search for truth, you cannot be in Christianity. None at all. None at all if you are searching for truth. So we just um, encourage you to search for truth. All right? Because don't think that you are in Christianity and it works for you. And that it is okay. No. The Most High promised a strong delusion to those who want to believe a lie and refuse to believe his truth. And that strong delusion is Christianity. Strong delusion. It will make the lie look just like the truth. So that is why everything looks like it works. Everything. Power in Jesus' name. Everything. Because you refuse to believe the truth. Search for the truth. And stop following religion. That's what we encourage you to do. So... And ju just to just to yes. say um, on yeah. that note, while the churches are closed today, it takes us yeah. back to the scripture that says we must worship the Most High in spirit and in truth. So right. that that actually stamped the seal on it in spirit and yep. in truth, not in a yep. building, not in a church building. You yep. know, you you can stay right in your home, and you can live a life that is pleasing to the most eye and is able to receive that gift he have for you, which is eternal life. All right. The, the thing about it is, what do you have to lose to look for truth? Because the time will come when if we do good, we're going to die, right? 
if yep. we do bad, we're going to die, right? Yep. But the question is, how do you want to die? <laughs> die in truth or die in a lie? There, there you have it. <laughs> that's 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 the that's the choice. Yeah. Sister Janet said, "Do we ever wonder why there are forty-five thousand denominations?" Yes, that's what I call them, because too many people interpret the Bible to fit their agenda, and they are all still wrong because they are all following the fake Christianity. Ah, oh, Sister Janet is another one of those um, persons who um, have come out of Christianity, who has recently come out of Christianity. And she said again, yes, talk about it. Pay your tithes and get blessed a hundredfold. Man, I sure paid a lot of tithes over the past 30 years. I could have been a millionaire already. <laughs> uh, this is what happens when you come out. When you come out, the truth hits you like a sledgehammer. And you start wondering, what was I, what was I thinking? Yes? She said again, it's not enough to just be an Israelite. We have to turn to the Most High, repent, and live the way he outlined in Deuteronomy 28. Okay, that's it. That is it. All right. So um, there are some more comments, but this thing is not letting me see the comments. All right. So if you have any questions, you can um, lay them out. So... Um, a lot, um, let me see those who are on trying to see those who are on alright so um, this video with Wayne brother Wayne we are both from Falmouth um, Jamaica knew each other of course for years upon years, and um, Wayne migrated, and um, he has kept his Christian roots. I, when I was out here in Jamaica, um, um, committing my evils in the world, he was there as a Christian, and um, he maintained his faith in the United States. And um, you know, it's a, it, it shows he has the heart to serve the most high and this is what a lot, a lot of what happens to our people our people have the heart to serve the most high but we do not know how to serve him because we have been sold the wrong way the false way to serve him so a lot of our people are in christianity genuinely wanting to serve the most high but guess what they believe that that is the way how we are to serve him but when you read the bible and reject religion then you get to see that almost everything that they are telling us is a lie. And that is why um, our website, justaword.org, justaword.org, contains a, um, a category called Christian Error, where there are now over 60 different articles focused on errors, the errors of Christianity. And of course, none of these articles any Christian has been able to refute because they are loaded with scriptural evidence, all right? Scriptural and historical evidence of this lie that is called Christianity. So we have the time, we have the chance, all right? Let us make use of the time, all right? I have known several people who I've been ministering to. The most I have taken them away during the time they are rejecting and dilly-dallying. Okay, yes, I'll talk to you. Um, I'm going to come and check you. We're going to sit down and reason. And then the next thing you hear, so-and-so dead, so-and-so gone. Yeah? The Most High sends people to us at certain opportune times, not to, trying to scare anybody, but just speaking the truth. He sends people to us at opportune times. Whenever we hear the messages, we have to seek his truth. We have to seek to follow him. We have to listen and try to Prove all things, as it says in First Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So if there are no more questions, let's see. Um, any more questions? Contending for the faith once delivered to the saints. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that website, Sister Janet. So 
If there are no more questions, I would just like to ask Brother Wayne now to have the last say to summarize, give us a summary, a last um, bit of word that he would like to leave um, with those who are viewing and who will be viewing in the future. All right? Go ahead, Wayne. Okay. Lastly, what I would like to leave with you all, um, in this time of pandemic, we get an opportunity to be home. Let's just use all this time wisely to get in the word for ourselves. Many people are praying and hoping that this thing will, will just get over so they can go back to their normal lives. Um, the truth is, there is no more normality. This is it. It is from no one. So the truth is, we must see it for what it is. If we are going to pray that this thing go away, what about the most high? What about the most high? When, when does he get to do his work that suits him? Whatever is going on, the most high knows about it and he allows it for a reason. So if the most high, or since he allows it, who are you and I to pray it away? Let's be humble. See it for what it is, because what is going on right now, so many of us think it will be our grandchildren will be seeing all these things. So you know what? It is really a wake-up call for us. And to see it for what it is. Our, our ways and the most high ways are so far apart. He's going to do and allow what pleases him. So my advice to you is, empty yourself from what you know or think you know. Get in the word. Ask the most high to open up your understanding and teach you. As long as you are willing to learn, he will teach you. And again, he says, come out of her, my people. Try to find out what is her. Don't take it from me. Ask the most high. It is in the word. Who is her? Come out of her, my people. The truth is, the word said, the time will come when grace will be done. Grace will be over. So for all the ones who are depending only on grace all your lives, at some point it will be over. There is something we have to do. Let's get up, get ready, and get in the truth. Have a blessed day. All right. Thanks, Brother Wayne, and thanks for coming. Thanks for watching, thanks, everyone. Sir. This is Brian from justaword.org. And um, with our, our other website, israelawaken.org. Israelawaken.org. All right. So check out justaword.org for more of our articles. And um, if you wish, you may. Um, send me a message. We can add you to our Facebook group. Lots of activities going on there. Lots of truth being revealed. Lots of stuff that has been hidden from most people. Yahuwah has been showing us. You'll be surprised at um, the um, amount of wisdom that not um, Yahuwah has um, thrown to us in this group whole lot of wisdom whole lot of um insights whole lot of dreams whole lot of prophecies lots of things going on there all right so we do what we do because we love our people and we do what we do for our people and in honor of the most high all right so thanks for watching and shalom All right. Shalom, so, shalom, shalom. Shalom.